Issue 203 After a Ratings Shark title page, we start out with the kids of Rosie throwing some rocks at Khan and talking exactly like elementary school bullies, saying that no one likes him and wants him around. Considering he was rude and trash me as concert, it kinda makes sense. Sonic fails to really defend Khan because the kids just point out his own hypocrisy, and Khan says he doesn't need to defend him, causing Sonic to notice something's wrong because that was oddly calm for him. Sonic lampshades to the kids that Rosie raised them better than that, and then compliments Khan on how he's working on his temper, saying that he's acting distinguished and humble. Khan insults Sonic about talking about humility when Sonic is known for being humble himself, and at first I was frustrated with him for not liking Sonic, but when Sonic gave him a noogie or whatever it's called, I could understand Khan snapping at him, even if Sonic was calling him princely. Khan snaps at him for hitting insecurity, saying that he was never really royalty to begin with, and people just attached a prophecy to him out of desperation in their warring nation. Considering what kind of magical universe he lives in, it's weird that he automatically disbelieves a prophecy, especially since he fits the description of the Monkey King hero so well. Who else would it be? Sure, he's insecure about believing in it, but he was very arrogant in his first appearances, making this version of him feel like a totally different character. Sonic is calm enough to reassure him despite his earlier behavior, and just then, they get an announcement over the intercom to tell them that there's hostiles at the city wall. Nicole explains the two units crossed over the wall before she could raise her shield. So I'm just gonna assume that keeping up the shield forever would take up too much power or something then. Still, if anyone could just go over the wall because the shield before the shield shows up if they're quick enough and she's distracted, doesn't that severely undermine the reliability of the force field? Snarfly and the Iron Queen are the ones who showed up, so I'm not sure why she's calling them units as if they're robots and she's only used to referring to robots. Nicole then explains that the reason she didn't detect them and raise the force field in time is that something's distorting her entire network. Obviously, the Iron Queen. Now, I'm glad this is lampshaded. But what does she mean by network? Does she mean her brain? Because if so, she should be taken over by her by now. And if by network she means the security system, which isn't necessarily attached to her brain, then that would make more sense. Then Khan decides to run off like a coward instead of helping with his lightning powers, although I don't really blame him after the pathetic way he fought last time. Sally orders Tails and Bunny to go attack the two villains, and obviously the condescending Iron Queen takes control of Bunny immediately because she has cyborg limbs. Okay, so I have a question. Why didn't Khan tell anyone that she could do this? Did he not know? This conflict is artificial because there's no logical reason he wouldn't have at least mentioned this power of hers as an as-you-know aside about how powerful she is in the face of Sonic's boasting, but he didn't. It's even more artificial because we cut past most of Khan's explanation about who the Iron Queen is when he showed up in 201, so there's no foreshadowing to them not knowing her powers. We could have just assumed he already told them about what she's capable of, but he didn't for the sake of having a story like this. After Bunny is forced to fly after an attack her friends, Sonic takes her to a contraption Nicole rigged out of the city's nanites, locking her in a cell. Immediately, the Iron Queen engages her arm cannon to break her out, which Nicole didn't anticipate somehow by making a better, stronger cell, and Khan saves Rosie's kids from the resulting laser blast, being fortunate enough to react in time. As Khan gets convinced to help by the kids because even they have more sense than him, Bunny is exhausted. And the Iron Queen figures out that because she's only half robot, it's somehow a logical conclusion that she has no battery, and thus all of her weapons and rockets run off her life force. Why Rotor couldn't just make a battery for her, I don't know. It could be a tiny one that could fit in her. It could have some chaos energy put in it. It's an interesting concept, out of tension, but it could have easily not been done. Antoine says, Monster, I'm gonna kill you! I honestly don't blame him. It makes sense he get a more harsh approach to his enemies being around the evil twins for so long. And of course he's not able to actually do anything with this approach, so it doesn't really matter. Sonic shows Tails compassion, telling him that he should take it easy because he's hurt, being dazed and holding his chest while his eyes are grey instead of blue for some reason. And Sally orders that she needs the Chaotix here now, and is fortunately smart enough to exclude Julie Sue because of her cyborg part. Just then, Khan shows up to fight the Iron Queen, forgetting that she could easily take control of him herself, and Sally, looking worried, orders Sonic to take Bunny to Freedom HQ. Khan is naturally stuttering in fear of her since he should remember what she did to him last time. By the way, Handle should have an exclamation mark or period to the right of it. I'm reminded of issue 134 with that mistake. 
Khan's crown gets removed by some extendable tentacles from Sadly's eggmobile, rather than Khan like shaking his head or moving aside in any way to keep that from happening. By the way, it's a it's a ring crown enhancing his powers, by the way, so it's pretty important. As I wonder why the hell Khan isn't throwing lightning at the villain couple, the Iron Queen says that he'll make an excellent pawn. Common sense would dictate that you should just throw lightning and chance killing these villains over letting yourself be brainwashed against your friends and potentially killing them instead, but Khan doesn't really work on logic. The story ends with him being brainwashed while also having an appearance change that is starkly different from the last time he was brainwashed, where he just had different looking eyes. This makes sense on an artistic meta level, but not in universe, as there's no reason the technology controlling Queen should be able to do this. So, that was illogical. We start out the next story with me being reminded of Penders as Knuckles is monologuing to himself and his thoughts about stuff we already know right from the start. He mopes about Espio's betrayal not making any fucking sense, and then we finally see the two confront each other, making the first few panels a waste of comic space. Espio fails to properly explain why he's working for the Iron Queen, since if he cared so much about duty, he would recognize his duty to the heroes would be more valuable than a duty to an evil tyrant. The story ends with Espio somehow almost winning the fight against the most powerful guardian ever, as Knuckles is about to fall off a cliff that he should be able to just glide onto and climb up anyways. Well, it was established that if he falls a certain way, he won't be able to catch air and glide, and that's why Athair had to save him, but still. He should be able to win against him, holding back or not. So little happens in the story that there's not much of a point to reading it. I think we could've just cut to the story following it and lost nothing. All you really need to know is Espio's trying to steal the Master Emerald. Most of it is just recap padding and Espio doesn't properly explain himself. He's just been turned into a tool for the writers to use against Knuckles all of a sudden, not an actual character who has logical thoughts. So that was the second story. The issue as a whole was by Ian Flynn, and the first story is about Bunny being used by the Iron Queen in an attempt to not only kill her friends, but kill her as well from exhausting her. While this is good for tension, and it makes clever use of the fact that she's a cyborg facing a Technomage, it logically never should have happened. Khan should have mentioned the main thing the Iron Queen's known for, and thus avoided this entire scenario. Even if he assumed everyone knew about it from a sort of, everyone knows that, myopia from living in another country, he should have logically mentioned it in the passing rather than to remind them of how powerful she is. And we could have just assumed that he did tell them about this power for his off screen in issue 201, but he didn't. There was no foreshadowing to this kind of story happening because Khan was written terribly just for the sake of forcing a specific plot to happen. I mean, I don't remember Monkey Khan being a complete dumbass. He's way more sympathetic, true, but his original incarnation was arrogant and violent. Not insecure and cowardly like Mr. Mopey here, who is the exact opposite. And I never got the impression that he was dumber than Knuckles. How much can you change a character's personality out of nowhere before they start to qualify as badly misinterpreted? As OC. They're basically reinventing the whole concept of Monkey Con into a character that's better, granted, but so different that it's nonsensical, as the only thing he has in common with him is the powers, and the same past. I mean, he could have been from a completely different alternate universe, for all we know. I don't buy that being away from the others made him undergo character development to completely do an 180 on his personality, aside from the temper. Much like with Antoine, they're having character development happen off-screen, destroying the appeal since it's too much of a sudden shift into a totally different person. We don't get to see them change.